the time is 10 o'clock, the place is Nottingham. <laughs> no one knows for certain what happens to us after we die, but some people are convinced that they know the answer after experiencing vivid memories of a past life. Maybe you think you've been here before. Yes, I've been hypnotised five times now by my brother, Bob. Each time I'm John Armour Raphael, and I'm fighting with the parliamentarians in the English Civil War in the 17th century. How do you account for this? I mean, and tell me a bit more about this, this character, John. Well, we know that he worked on a farm in Highland, which is in Nottingham, and um, with his parents, John and Elizabeth. Um, and then in 1643, he was involved in one of the first battles of the war, which was at Newbury. Actually got injured, um, well, we were didn't take and to a place called Alcott. Now, when you say we know, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, but when yeah. you say we know, do we know this because we've read about this, or do we know this because you've, um, you've th this arrived at this in your head? That's right, it's just come out under hypnosis. I mean, I knew nothing about the English Civil War before all this hypnosis, you see. But is this provable? I mean, this came into your head that mm. this character was there and he existed where you say he existed mm. and he did this and he did the other. Mm. Can you prove any of it? Well, we're having difficulty in finding John, as I say, John Armour Raphael at the moment. Um, we know that he, we think that he worked, as I say, on this farm in Highland. And, um, and as I say, was eventually called up by the, um, the arm to go and fight, you see. Why did you hypnotise him? Uh, anyway, it, in the first place. It had been a hobby for several mm. years, and I'd had one or two partial successes. And mm. uh, the one evening that we uh, organised it, his daughter-in-law was going to come, and she backed out at the last minute for whatever reason. And Peter stepped in and said, "Don't waste the evening. We'll, you know, I'll do it." Mm. And he immediately became this soldier. And um, on subsequent uh, sessions, he kept going back to the same person. And then we physically went on locations to the places he'd talked about. He talked described. about a church somewhere, hadn't he? He talked about a church in, got a picture in Halem. Right. Yeah. Uh, he described it in detail, uh, the interior and the ex uh, outside. Oh, you've got the picture. We actually it? went to the church. He got the name right. This is the church itself, is it? He also yeah. said there were two windows in the front of the church. Yeah. And when we arrived, we found one and a clock. But when we looked very closely, we could see the clock had been put in about 150 years later inside one of the windows to cover it. Oh, I see. So mm. you thought initially, he said two windows, you thought he was wrong, oh, well, and then he found out that there was one window behind the clock. Yeah. We then went inside the church. Yeah. As soon as he walked in, he said, it's all wrong. It's not as it was. It's all mm. been turned round. We managed to locate the uh, retired warden of the church mm. in the village, and he confirmed that the interior had, in fact, been turned round. Let mm. me ask you this. Um, when you tell people that you've had this experience, what's their reaction? <laughs> Two reactions. Well, yes, I mean, <laughs> family boys, they're uh, over the moon about it, but there are the sceptics, you know, who just look at you, see you properly off your rocker like. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> do you, I mean, do you doubt yourself sometimes? I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not suggesting <laughs> no. that, I'm, I, but I can understand other people thinking that. I mean, do you doubt yourself sometimes? Oh, no. Not now. No, no. no. You're wholly convinced that this happened? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Who else thinks they've had a, another life or lives? Lady on the phone. 